Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be cleaning up the button system a little bit, make it easier to add new buttons and make the hit detection just a little bit better. We might be making it even better, maybe in the future, I'm not sure. But let's get started. So, in multiplier button script, since we're gonna start with this, as you can see, we have a bunch of code for three buttons and well, if you're planning to make a full game, I'm assuming you're going to have like at least 15 at each button. And well, that's going to be like 500 plus lines of code just for one section of buttons. How about we shorten that to about like 30, 40 lines of codes and get all of that working. So first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the button three and button two functions so select all of this all the way until you see your comment on button two configuration unless you didn't do that then all the way until you're touching two equals false then just hit backspace remove all of that we're not going to be needing that anymore or basically remove most of the work that you did until button one so now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the buttons that we have in workspace. So we're going to do for I B in pairs workspace dot buttons dot multiplier buttons get children do and make sure you specify multiplier buttons for the well, multiplier button script. So what this is doing is it's going to go through each and every since we're getting children, we're getting all of the contents of the multiplier buttons folder. So this is a child of multiplier buttons. This is also, and so is this. These are the children, this is the parent. It's like a family. So we're going to get all of the children of multiplier buttons. And now each one of these instances is assigned to our variable V. We can make this really anything we want. We can make this buttons just for convenience. But just to keep it simple, we're going to do V. V is just going to be so we can go like V dot button and get when it's touched. So first thing we're going to do is local touching button equals false. So this is our variable to determine whether or not the player is currently touching the button. Now we're going to do V dot button dot touch connect function hit. So when the child that we are currently on so it's looping through all of the children so it's going to be like child one it's going to do everything in here then child two everything in here and then child three so right now let's say it's child one term we're going to go into child one which is button one and then we're going to do button which is the button model in here and we're going to do dot touch which is when it's touch and obviously pass our parameter hit so we know what touched it so now we're going to do or we're gonna do touching button equals true because something is now touching the button. So let's do local player equals game get service players get player from character hit dot parent. Now we're gonna check if it's a player, so we're gonna do if player then. So here we're making a variable called player, getting a service from Roblox called players, and we're gonna get the player from the character which is hit.parent and the reason why we're doing hit.parent is because hit let's say the player's leg touched the part that's what hit would be and the parent of the player's leg is the character so we're getting it from the player's character hit.parent so if it is a player we're going to repeat until touching button equals false so this should be self-explanatory we're basically repeating whatever is in between these lines until the touching button variable is set to false so we're just going to do create button, which is our function we made earlier. And then we're going to do the first parameter, which is our player, and then the button, which we can just put in V. So now we have set up our touched, but now we actually have to set touching button to false. So we're going to do V dot button dot touch ended connect function hit. And make sure you go down a few lines after your touch or at least one line unless you like to keep it like this but i find it a little bit more organized with spaces between each or most things that you do 
So the first thing we're going to do is get player like we did up here. And let's actually bring this touching button down here. So if you want to cut it like I just did, you can do control X or right click and press cut. Then you can go after if player then since we're checking if there's a player and do control V or right click and hit paste. So now we can go to our touch ended and do local player equals game get service players get player from character hit dot parent. And once again, we're going to do if player then and then touching button equals false. So when the part is no longer being touched with a button, we're setting touching button to false because well, nothing's touching the button. So that should be false. But when it is, we are making sure that it is set to true. And I'm just going to remove the space here. So now this is all the code we should need to be able to add any button we want. We don't have to modify this code ever again like we had to before. So we can remove all of this for our first button or any other buttons you have left. You can remove the code for this button one dot button touch ended touched and then the local touching one. And we can remove this or you can just do button configuration instead. So now we have simplified probably hundreds of lines of code all into just a few lines. And now we can do the same thing over here with our setting our text. So what I'm going to do is on our, I'm actually just going to do this before this button one effects comment. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to loop through the buttons once again. So for I V in pairs workspace dot multiplier or dot buttons dot multiplier buttons get children do make sure you add that do and then an end must always be well at the end so right here what we're doing is we're doing v dot button dot cash billboard which is what bl stands for dot cash dot text equals button or let's do v dot config dot price dot value then continuation cash needed so we could just copy and paste the multiplier here too but let's go ahead and type it out so we're gonna do button or let's do v dot button dot mult billboard dot mult dot text equals v dot config dot multi to add dot value continuation x multiply so this is just setting the billboard inside of our button Set of our cache and then the text of our cache to well the buttons config and then multiplier or price so now we can remove all of this and we can add our task.weight 0.1 back like we had before and look at how much we have cleaned up our code we no longer have all of that unnecessary stuff over here we do have unnecessary spaces if you want to reduce the lines of the code even further what we can do is just reduce it like so and something we can do is we no longer have a use for these variables so you can actually remove them in this comment and if you'd like you can also remove these buttons at the top just like so so we've reduced this quite a bit from like around 100 lines to 56 and now this is all we need and if we go to our game and we want to add a new button all we have to do is press ctrl d or right click on this button folder and press duplicate i'm just going to move it over a little bit rename it to button 4 by either right clicking it pressing rename or pressing f2 let's do button 4 to the little drop down go to our config in the multiply to add we're gonna go from 25 to let's say 50 and then our price we're gonna make a little bit should we do more than double or less than double let's do 850 a little bit less than double now if we load up our game we should see that this all should be set up and all we had to do was duplicate the button and change a few values in the button so as you can see, if we walk over here, we have 50x multiplier, 850 cash needed. If we go to our server, go to players, our name, leader stats cash, and just type in a jumble of numbers just to be a little bit richer, we can go over here and stand on this button, which there is one issue that I forgot to add. We need to add a delay 
and my studio may have just crashed because I forgot to add a delay. Please make sure you do that. This is kind of showing the importance of doing that as yep, my studio did crash. If you don't add a delay to like most loops, like let's say you're doing a repeat loop, that's gonna be basically repeating every non-existent second. So basically it's just repeating a trillion times every nanosecond and that's a little bit too quick. So we have to make sure at least some delay to slow it down just to make it easier. And sorry that the screen turned black for a second. Studio did crash. And even if Studio did not crash, there would have been a different issue which the script would exhaust or in other words, it would just stop working. So make sure we add a delay to that. My apologies for that little mistake. Oh, not that little, but let's just go back to server script service button scripts multiplier buttons and let's go down here and make sure we add a task dot wait at least at least like this even this is fine at least it's better than no delay at all but I'm just gonna do let's say 0 0.05 as I think that's pretty good just add it in P because it's just repeating too many times per second and now we can basically transfer this into our rebirth button script so we can select all of this right click and press copy or press ctrl c go to our rebirth buttons and then remove all that we have for any buttons that we added once again sorry for not doing this earlier and making you guys like constantly add more buttons if you did so we're just gonna select all of this from the local touching to all of the buttons that we've created and just press ctrl v or right click and press paste and then i'm just going to remove one and make sure when you do this that you change multiplier buttons or whatever buttons that you have there to rebirth buttons or whichever one the script is made for and let's do the same thing that we did in the other script i'm just going to remove some unnecessary spaces because well we don't need all of these spaces in fact we could remove them all we can remove our button variables and our buttons at the top and we can go back to our multiplier buttons and let's copy our button in one effects select all of this right click press copy or press ctrl c go over here select all of this right click press paste or ctrl v and we do actually have to change a little bit here instead of multi to add if we go to workspace buttons rebirth buttons any button that we have in reverse and config make sure that you change multi to add to whatever it is so for me it's reb to add or rebirth to add and then we can do rebirths change the text make sure you do that and if you do change the billboard name make sure you do rebirth billboard and i'm going to assume i just put rebirth so make sure you change the rebirth billboard and rebirth to whatever you had before if you don't know what to change it to though if we go undo all of this, oh, I undid a little bit too much. Just make sure that you change it to basically the same exact thing, except replacing button one with um V, which is what's in our loop. And I see that we added a plus before here. So let's just do plus and then a continuation and then that amount reverse. So now this should be all of our script simplified and now let's close out both of our scripts and once again we can duplicate our button one for our rebirth slide it over here rename it to button two and all we have to do is slightly change this up so let's do 350 and let's make the multiplier or the reverse you gain three and it should automatically be set up without any additional changing of scripts. Now one thing just to make the hitbox detention or detection slightly better, what we can do is select the button part of one of your buttons. And what you want to do is you can press Ctrl D or right click and press duplicate. This is optional by the way. 
at this point you've basically finished the video this is just to make it so that the hit detection on the actual button is a little better so sometimes when you touch the button it doesn't actually start automatically gaining you just want to make sure that that doesn't happen as often so duplicate the button and then all you want to do is hit scale move it up a little bit like so you can remove the billboard guis or anything inside of that button as what we're going to do is go to our properties of the button search our transparency set it to one can collide set it to false and then rename this red part of the button or the color part of the button to something like button model so that should make the hit detection a slightly better so let's make sure we hit play make sure you always press file in the top left and hit save to roblox or at least publish to roblox and i see i accidentally made a little bit of a mistake let's just go ahead and go back so we actually do need these billboard guis inside of our button so you don't have to do it like this i might make up another way to do it or you have to do the same thing with the other buttons i'm actually gonna real quick just keep this as normal so let's just put these back in button model go to button i'm just gonna read what this error is rebirth billboard is not a valid member of the buttons so i'm guessing i have just yeah i have just spelled things incorrectly let's go to the rebirth button script oh well my mistake i accidentally forgot to change multiplier buttons to rebirth buttons like i said before make sure you do change that every time you switch scripts if you copy and paste it and you could just copy and paste the entire script but i wouldn't do that as you don't want to change the create button so if you want to you could do what i did earlier to increase the detection or just give it more functionality and i see i have made another quick error let's go and check this out Oh, yeah. So if we read this, button is not a valid member of workspace. So multiplier buttons dot button one. That's because I renamed it to button model. My mistake. These errors probably should not be happening to any of you guys. This is just because I keep forgetting to rename or change anything. But now our script should be finished and we should make or it should be easier to add new buttons like see so i'm gonna go to my server go to players go to my leader stats i'm going to move it on my search i'm gonna add some very normally large amount of stats as you can see we can go over here step on this button and gain some multiplier as you can see sometimes it stops this is why i was suggesting creating this longer just so the hit detection is a bit better so if we go over here it'll add plus three and well Guess I'm broke. Person is broke. Sorry. So as you can see, keep gaining multiplier. And go over here and gain some rebirths. So there we go. That's how to make our system well, just a little bit cleaner and make it easier so we can add more buttons more efficiently and quickly. And this makes it so any new changes to our script, we don't have to go through 5,000 different buttons, changing each one manually, even doing control F it could be a little bit tedious. But here, now all we have to do is modify anything within these spaces and we can update our script. So hopefully you guys enjoy and see ya.